All right, let's go through the Star Wars canon via the comics for the month of February 2016. So by the end of this video, you will be all caught up with the canon, at least for the comics, for February. For that month, there were four issues released, Obi-Wan and Anakin issue number two, Darth Vader issue 16, Star Wars issue 16, and Kanan issue number 11. And I'm going to go by release order, so starting with Obi-Wan and Anakin issue number two. In the first issue, 12-year-old Anakin Skywalker is having doubts about his path and has asked to leave the Jedi Order. Obi-Wan and Anakin go on a mission together to answer a call for Jedi assistance. But they crash land and discover the ruins of an advanced civilization that has been abandoned. But they also discover primitive survivors. A battle between two airships ends with one plummeting to the ground. Obi-Wan manages to save a pair of women from the crew before the ship crashes. But the women claim to never have heard of Jedi. The comic starts with the women asking if the two Jedis are open or closed. And as Obi-Wan uses a Jedi mind trick to calm the women, an airship begins to fire at them. Obi-Wan throws his lightsaber and downs the airship, but as it falls, a man jumps from the ship and Anakin catches him. I like the next page when one of the women tell Anakin he was an idiot, the man was the worst of the closed, and all he had to do was let the man fall to his death. Anakin says, I don't do that. Yeah, he would never let anyone die. Ever. Turns out the open and the close are feuding with each other, and each feels that the other side is responsible for all the problems and the poisoning of the planet and all of that. And they've been fighting for so many generations, they have no idea why the fighting was started except for, well, it's obviously the other side's fault. And our side, we're the ones keeping chaos from falling in this region or this planet. Obi-Wan tells Anakin to leave them, but before they can leave, they tell the Jedi that without their weapons, they're as good as dead. They have two options, freeze on the mountaintop or cross the sea without weapons. Obi-Wan decides to help them cross and see them to safety. While they're thinking of ways to get them to safety, we see Anakin's brilliance with machines, where he figures out a way to repair an airship for them to travel on over the sea. But before they can put that plan into motion, the corpse leeches notice them. Obi-Wan notes that they are nearly mindless beasts and following their nature. They should not die simply because they crossed their path. He tells Anakin to use the Force to send them away. Obi-Wan easily does this, but Anakin is seen struggling to the point where he has to decapitate the beast instead. And this ends up causing a flashback to the temple on Coruscant, where Anakin in the past was dealing with trying to tame beasts. And he is struggling hardcore, just like we see him in present time. Well, present time. As hard as Anakin tries, he can't calm the beast. But he tells Obi-Wan he will stay until he masters the technique. His master tells him that he knows that, but they have an appointment to keep with Chancellor Palpatine. In the Chancellor's office, Palpatine informs Obi-Wan that he is taking Anakin on an errand. Obi-Wan protests, telling him Anakin is advanced for his age, but still has much to learn. Obi-Wan offers to go with them, stating the Jedi are responsible for Palpatine's safety, but the man brushes his offer off, saying there will be no danger and he is capable of handling himself. Palpatine takes Anakin to Coruscant's subsurface on level 2685. Palpatine explains he disguises himself, comes down here to do good, and that it is the darkness that most requires the light. He then enters a club with Anakin. Back in present time, Anakin is able to fix the airship and they begin their journey. On the ship, Anakin compares the open and close to the Sith and Jedi, and Obi-Wan tells him to trust in the Force. The comic ends with Obi-Wan saying he thinks for the first time since arriving on the planet, they're safe. So many great Obi-Wan moments this issue. I enjoyed him taking away their weapons, also when he walks away from the airship after he downs it and his back is to it, as there's just this explosion in the background and his lightsaber is coming back to him. 
I'm also really enjoying seeing Anakin and how he is around Obi-Wan at this stage in his training, and Anakin really looks up to Obi-Wan at this point and idolizes him and is in awe of a lot of things that he does. I also really enjoy seeing Anakin struggle to fit in at the temple and the glimpses we're getting into his training and how it wasn't as easy. And, and yeah, each Padawan struggles with different areas, but obviously Anakin's going to be a different case because he came a lot later into his training, so seeing how he interacts with the other Padawans, how his training is going, seeing a glimpse into that is what's really making me appreciate this run. And I would have to say the downside to that is we're not getting enough in the flashbacks, at least for me. I wish that we had more substance to these flashbacks of Anakin training and just dealing with all this and his growth. Also, those corpse leeches might be added to my list of top 10 terrifying creatures in the Star Wars universe, or at least the new universe. We're going to see next issue how crazy these things get. Next released comic was Darth Vader issue 16. This issue was dealing with the aftermath of Vader down. One event during that time being that Vader killed General Carbon, who had laid a trap for him. Vader has returned to Coruscant where he comes before Palpatine. Vader shows him the pieces of Carbon's body, telling his master, I found him. Best part, Palpatine's eyes get a little bit bigger and he asks Vader, are these lightsaber wounds, Vader? And Vader's chill response, you wish me to prove myself, master. Give me a fight worthy of my time. But Palpatine just brushes it off and tells Vader that the ore barons of Shah Taran are rebelling despite Vader's little visit. Which is troublesome, since their planet provides many rare metals and minerals, and the Empire's advancement depends on them. Palpatine is ordering a full military intervention. Vader will go, and Dr. Silo will accompany him. And here we see Vader question Palpatine, and Palpatine scold him. There is a reason. You are student, and I am master. I will explain all when you return from this task. Show your merit, Vader." And if you're up on current canon, you know that Vader and Palpatine's relationship has changed a lot over the years and through the, the canon material as these men spend more and more time together and Vader becomes a little bit more on the up and up. And really in the beginning, Vader was very naive and felt that their relationship was unique and it wasn't the typical master and apprentice relationship and he even talks to Palpatine about this saying, well, typically the master is killed eventually by the apprentice, but that's not us. Our, our relationship isn't like that. And then as time goes on, he questions a little bit more, it's a little bit more rebellious until finally we see him in The Empire Strikes Back when he already knows that Palpatine was hiding his son, and he's at the point where he's like, you want to know what? You're right. We don't have a special relationship. Fuck you. I'm taking my son. I am going to rule the galaxy and murder you. So seeing the dynamics of their relationship to me is just, oh, it's so, so good. So anyways, Vader goes to the planet, and this starts the show Tehran Wars. This basically shows Vader fighting on the battlefield, and the queen is with him, though he disapproves of her being there and in danger. But because the war minister was killed by Vader, along with the rest of her family, she has to fulfill all royalty roles, or no one will respect her rule. When she suggests retreat, the ore barons are too strong. Vader instead has a dwelling citadel destroyed. When the queen says that it was the core of production in this area and was irreplaceable and would never produce again, Vader says, it will never rebel again. We also see Dr. Silo and his creations again. Silo believes that Vader only needs to make one mistake, and the Emperor will turn to him and his understudies. They make it clear they are very aware of what happened to Carbon, and mistakes won't happen to them so easily. Vader's response? We will see. We also see more of Vader's ruthlessness this issue with his plans to repeat the Dwelving Citadel attack, letting them know that all that resist will have their possessions swept away. When the Queen tries to reject this plan, Vader tells her all she must do is obey. Vader ends up leaving and she follows after him, letting him know that if he disrespects her in front of her people, what does he think is going to happen when he leaves? They're going to rebel again. They won't respect her. 
and they basically come to a compromise where Vader will give her the illusion of respect if she never questions him ever again in public. Lastly, we see BT and Triple Zero, with Triple Zero letting Vader know that he can simply rearrange the chemicals in her food and make her uh, more docile and easier to work with. The, the drooling might be a bit distracting, but Vader has other plans. He had the droids make a broadcast with his identity shielded. Vader has offered a large bounty on Afra, who is in the hands of the rebels. She needs to be found and returned. Dead or alive is of no matter to Vader. In Star Wars 16, we begin Rebel Jail. This also takes place after Vader down. Dr. Afra is captive on the Millennium Falcon. Now they continue their mission to free the galaxy from the Emperor, with Princess Leia teaming with the smuggler, Sana Staros, and Luke and Han going together on a secret mission for the Rebellion. We discover Dr. Afra has escaped her binders for the fourth time and gets a hold of a blaster. Just as Afra is getting smug, Sana comes from behind and takes her out. The smuggler is also racking up Leia's bill for every little extra thing she has to do. They end up taking Afra to the Sunspot prison, the biggest, baddest penitentiary the Alliance can offer that technically doesn't exist, and most people on the Alliance don't even know about. Which I think was one of the coolest things of this issue, seeing a rebel prison that most of the rebels don't even know about and neither does the Empire. And of course, while the Warden is boasting about the prison being impossible to find, escape, or break into, we see bounty hunters break into it. Next, we see a bit of dialogue between Sana and Leia about how they went about getting information from Afra. The smuggler criticizes them for not using harsh enough interrogation tactics, stating the Empire would have gone further. Leia says that is why they are fighting the war against them, and Sana replies, that's why you're going to lose. And Leia says they're also fighting so people can disagree. We also learn Sana and Afra used to work together, and perhaps were lovers. But when Afra tries to bribe her into helping her, the woman refuses. Meanwhile, Han is gambling, no surprise there. Luke questions this, stating they're supposed to be buying supplies. But instead, Han is gambling away rebellion money. It's no surprise when Han loses the money, and Luke and Han are kicked out, with Luke wanting to go back for it. Han tells him to get on the ship, or he's a dead man. While Han is complaining about being rusty and glad Chewie wasn't there to see him fail, Luke is worried that they are going to get kicked out of the Rebellion, and how he's ever going to explain this to Leia. While the two argue, Han tells him, you can argue about money when you have a price on your head. Luke tells him that he does. 60,000 credits on his head, and Han is so upset that Luke's bounty is higher than his own. Poor Han. Luke suggests selling himself to a bounty hunter, and Han tells him not to worry. There's always something, somewhere, in the need of smuggling. The comic ends with the prison break-in and the bounty hunters taking out the guards. Wasn't my favorite comic. The I think what it was is that the the warden dialogue was a bit too on the nose and I didn't like it. It was too predictable. I actually really enjoy the idea of a rebel prison and I want them to expand more on that, but I don't think they're going to. I think this is just going to be a uh, transition to something else and we're not going to see more of it, but they could have and it could have been so good, but I trust them and where they are going. Also really excited to see Han and Luke's shenanigans. You know he's going to get them into trouble and it is going to be hilarious, frustrating, and typical Han behavior. Last comic of the month was Kanan issue number 11. This continues with Kanan being wounded and dreaming of his past as the Padawan Caleb under Master Bilaba. For simplicity's sake, as always, I will just be calling Kanan Kanan, even when dealing with his past life as Caleb. We ended with General Grievous landing on the planet and facing off with Bilaba, while a cage warrior faces off against Kanan. In present time that the Star Wars Rebels series takes place in, 15 years after the fall of the Jedi Order, we see Kanan's friends have been captured by the stormtroopers, but then we jump back to Kanan being a Padawan. Kanan is holding the dead clone trooper stance, and a dark haze of anger and fear invades his mind. 
and for the first time in his life, Kanan wants to kill. Kanan charges at the warrior. Bilba is fighting Grievous, who, as expected, is taunting her. During his taunting, Bilba tells him the Jedi he had fought is dead, and the Jedi he faces now is one he's never encountered. She then cuts off two of his lightsaber-wielding arms, but she is hit. Grey and Stiles see her wounded and start shooting, one declaring they have to save her and the other stating they failed her once. They will never fail her again. And this is a knife in the heart because when Order 66 is executed, these are two of the troopers that are present when they turn on Bilaba and Kanan and they end up killing Bilaba and then going after Kanan. Kanan is still fighting the cage warrior and realizes that while there is a power in anger and in darkness, and that the power is seductive and he could easily sink into that pool and never emerge again, that even a Padawan can see that that isn't the way to honorably grieve his friend, and that isn't the path of a true Jedi. Kanan offers the cage warrior mercy, and the man introduces himself. He then lights himself on fire and rushes at Kanan, attempting to take Kanan with him in death. Kanan then decapitates him. This is the first time Kanan has taken a life and he hopes it is the last time and as terrible as this sounds, I actually really respected them for showing this and it added a lot, I believe, to the series. The last few issues felt a bit stale and like we couldn't go anywhere else. Like they, they dug up his history but they were kind of stalling out, which probably explains why this series is coming to an end soon, and adding this new bit of character development was much needed, in my opinion. Yeah, that child, that child killing someone was much needed, Roris. You're such a good person. Kanan and the two troopers meet up and they race to where Bilba is injured, firing at Grievous, but he escapes. The third battle is over, and Kanan has lost his first friend and taken his first life. He knows both will leave wounds that will never fully heal. The war no longer seems romantic and exciting, yet he's never been so sure of his place and filled with so much purpose. They get a mission update. They are being sent to the planet where Bilba and Kanan were when Order 66 was executed. The comic ends with us jumping back to Rebels' current time 15 years after the Jedi Order is destroyed, with stormtroopers asking if they should bring in the Rebels for interrogation or perform execution right here. Kanan breaks out of the tank, gets his lightsaber, manages to tie his hair back, and takes out the troopers, saving his friends. That is Star Wars canon via the comics for February 2016, so hopefully now you are caught up and rearing and ready to go for March 2016 canon via the comics. Come back for more Star Wars videos, comic videos, Game of Thrones videos, Walking Dead reviews, sci-fi fantasy, all that good stuff.